let's take an example problem and see how does a conversion of a problem happens and how do I take a problem A, which is a non-linear constraint optimization problem and convert that into a problem which is a sequential quadratic program problem. Okay, so let's take this formulation. As you can see, this is an objective function which has a non-linear terms and also it has equality constraint and it is an inequality constraint and both the inequality and equality constraint and also the objective functions are non-linear. Okay, so everything is non-linear here. What we are going to do is we will start with this and we will convert this problem into a sequential quadratic problem. That's the step one. Solve that sequential quadratic problem and that is going to act as a small, you know, sort of a, you know, main basis for solving this problem. Okay. So how do we go about uh, formulating a local quadratic programming problem? That let's assume we are starting with some initial guess, which is the first thing that we need to do in any optimization problem, which is like initial iteration, what is the value of x0? And let's assume that to be 4, 2. So depending upon where we lie in the, our search space, what we do, using this, we evaluate the fx. So if I evaluate the fx using x0, 4, 2, then I can take and substitute x1 equal to 4, x2 equal to 2, and then we can write this equation. And from there, by simplifying this equation, we will get the f 4, 2 to be equal to 8. So that gives me one component. The second thing that we do is we, you know, check whether the equality constraint has been satisfied or not. You will see if I substitute the value of x equal to x1 equal to 4 and x2 equal to 2 in the equality constraint, which is this equation here, that is equal to 3, and that's not equal to 0, so the equality constraint is not satisfied. Similarly, we will check for the what is happening with respect to the inequality constraint. So the inequality constraint g for 2 will be checked and that is equal to 4. And also this is also not less than equal to 0. So this is 4 which is greater than equal to 0. So this inequality constraint is not satisfied. So here what we are going to do is we are going to take that and we are going to formulate the local SQ problem. So when we formulate the local SQ problem, first thing that we need to do is we need to take the gradient information of the original function with respect to the variables, which in our case turns out to be two variable problems, so it's x1 and x2. That's for simplicity. If you have n number of problem, n number of variables, you can similarly have n dimensional, you know, gradient vector. Okay, so this is the gradient vector that we will have, and you will evaluate that gradient vector at the current solution, which is 4, 2. So if you evaluate that, you will get this vector, and then this vector could be first used to create a quadratic program, which we'll show in a little bit. Similarly, what you do is you also compute the gradient of the equality and the inequality constraint. So if you take the gradient of the equality constraint and take the derivative of that with respect to x1, that will come out to be zero. If you take the derivative of the equality constraint with respect to x2, that will come out to be two x. And if you relate that gradient with the current solution, which is four two, you will have this zero four vector. Similarly, the inequality constraint, if you take the derivative of that inequality constraint with respect to x1 and x2, you will have x2 and x1. And if you evaluate that at the current location, which is 4, 2, you will get 2, 4. Okay, so now we have all the information that we need in order for us to set up and create a modified version of the problem, which is known as the local quadratic programming problem for the original objective function. Okay, so how that is done? It has two components, linear component, the objective function will have a linear component and uh, those components. So what we do, we write the linear component, component as fx plus delta fx times d. So if you take a look at that, then the locally at 4, 2, this will be equal to 8. So we have evaluated the function and that function evaluation came out to be 8. We had this gradient vector which was 32 minus 24 and times d1 and d2, this d1 and d2 are the local variables which are approximating and corresponding to the variables x1 and x2. So again, since we want to distinguish that this is, you know, different problem uh, than the original problem which is x, x1 and x2 space, we write this as a d1 and d2 space. But essentially d1 is encapsulating x1 and d2 is encapsulating x2. So if we multiply that together, we will have this linear component in the overall objective function. That's the first thing. Then we will go ahead and we will have a quadratic component. So the quadratic component will be defined by this function, fq is equal to half d transpose d, which is half d1 times d2, and then this. So if you have multiplied that together, 
this half d1 squared plus d2 squared will be the quadratic components. Okay, so that's the quadratic component. We take this component, we take this component, we add them together, and that gives me the objective function, the local objective function that I need to be focusing on in the iteration that we are currently located. Okay, so that's one, right? So what we'll do, we'll add this linear and quadratic. So this component, which is right here, written here, and this component, which is written here, and that will give me a quadratic program, okay, which is the local pro uh, problem that I'd be solving. So this becomes my local objective function, which I need to be solving. So if you look into this, right, there are quadratic equations in here, right? So it's only two variable, two degree. Whereas if you look into the original problem, what is the original problem? The original problem essentially has uh, this cubic terms, x13 and so on. Right? And this is the original objective optimization function. What we have done by going to this quadratic programming framework, what we have done is we have wrote, written a QP problem where we have added all the components and from this components we got this. So locally this is the objective function that we are going to be optimizing which is different than the original objective function and that's what is mapping from one space to another space, local space is done here. So once we, do, we have done this, right, we can also, you know, write the equality and inequality constraint and they have to be converted into a linear. So irrespective of what is the nature of the equality constraint and inequality constraint in the original problem, uh, the way we have to do locally is we have to convert each of the equality and inequality constraint into a linear equation. And this is the equations that are used to convert a uh, equality constraint which is non-linear into a linear one. So again, uh, we have computed all these uh, terms previously and that's what we did during uh, some of the previous slides. So from there, we can have this 3 plus 0, 4, d1, d2 and this becomes my local equality constraint for the quadrat sequential quadratic program. Similarly, we will have the local approximation of the inequality constraint, but this approximation will be a linear approximation, whereas in the original space, you can go and see that the inequality constraint is non-linear, but we are basically using this equation and then we have derived all of this equation terms previously in the slide and using this equation, we have converted and created a local inequality constraint which is linear in nature and now we take one in the previous one, right, the sequential quadratic program, this is the one which is my objective function. Then I take two, which is my inequality linear constraint, sorry, equality linear constraint. And then we have equation three, which is linear inequality constraint. And combining one, two, and three, we now have a constraint optimization problem, which is quadratic program, but which is slightly modified version of the original optimization problem that we are solving. But we will solve the problem one, two, three, and we find out where the solution for problem one, two, three lies, and we will go on from there. And that's, that's the solution approach that is typically there. So this defines one, two, three combined defines the local quadratic programming problem at x zero, which is four, two, okay? So once we have that, what we do? We, from there, we can formulate the Lagrangian, which is we have learned in the previous lecture. So we take that problem, we can basically combine the y, nu, or u, okay? Uh, we, by adding a slack variable, we converted the inequality constraint into an equality constraint, multiplied that by u, and we have original equality constraint, which we multiplied by nu. So this becomes my Lagrangian, right? This is not the augmented Lagrangian, this is Lagrangian, so that's why we are only adding slack variables and adding u, uh, we are adding the equality constraint and multiplying that by nu, and we have a linear combination of the equality and inequality constraint, and then we add that to the objective function, and that's the Lagrangian, and then what we do is to on the Lagrangian, here we are not now going and making an augmented Lagrangian, now on the, on the Lagrangian, we basically use this Lagrangian and use a Newton's method or a steepest gradient descent method and we find the optimal solution to this problem, which is given by D star and whatever is the optimal solution to this problem, which is D star, becomes my X1, which is basically moving away from X0 to X1, so which was, you know, um, 2, 4, 
previously we've come to 5, 3 here, okay. So if you look into x0, right, the x0 previously, x0 was 4, 2, right, 4, x1 was 4, 2. From there, if I have defined this Lagrangian, and if I use a Newton's method to solve for this problem, our optimal solution for d1 will come out to be 5, d2 will come out to be 3, and that is what we allocate to x1. So our x1 is changing from the previous iteration. The previous iteration, these values were 4, 2. Now in this new iteration, new iteration by solving this quadratic programming, this becomes 5, 3. Now we reformulate next iteration we reformulate another quadratic program at x1 location using the approach that i have shown you in the previous two to three slides and then that will give me a new lagrangian function we will use again a newton's method to solve for that function and in that case we will get a new solution for these and that will become my x2 and that's how iteratively this we move and again we are checking for uh, the you know convergence criteria if the objective function is decreasing or not if it is not significantly decreasing then we do stop so use all the stopping criteria on top of this method and you have an approach that could be used to solve for constraint optimization problem so not so summarizing what you do is you take a problem constraint optimization problem you convert that into a simpler problem for which the convergence and you know the solution is very very fast and that simpler problem is see is the quadratic programming problem and that's an approximation problem and there is a steps that you can use to go from the original problem to the quadratic pro problem approximation you go ahead and solve that quadratic programming problem and then using the solution that you get out you change the actual excess in the original problem and you repeat these steps iteratively and on top of that you also check for the convergence criteria and that gives you an algorithm or an approach that could be used to solve for constraint optimization problem and again this is a very widely used uh, approach for solving you know you know medium scale problems uh, in constraint optimization which is known as sqp or sequential quadratic programming problem